Well, I wanted to talk about a different circuit today, but unfortunately, it's... This is a pink noise generator. And it was breadboarded and hastily hot glued into this case. There we go. Blending knob here. I can blend in stereo from pink noise to white noise. I do prefer the pink. It sounds like a distant seashore. And speaking of distant seashore, I was scheduled to have a call with Professor Biscuit right about now. I'm gonna use the etheric ham radio connected to the oscilloscope. Ooh. It's not a normal radio. Peanut Butter 6000, this is Mongoose Hunter. Do you copy, over? Peanut Butter, ah, there you are. Peanut Butter, standby, switching to Vox. Professor, I can see you now. Can you hear me okay? Seems to me a bit of a delay. Uh, good morning there, Professor Biscuit. How are you today? I say, I'm quite good. Things are looking up for me. Why is that, Professor Biscuit? I'll tell you. This morning, I got out of my bed, which happens to be a hollowed out log next to the sea. And I had a cup of tea. This cup of tea was an Earl Grey, and it was delicious. Then I had a little snack of oysters, sardines, and a biscuit. It was a delicious, well-rounded breakfast. Where are you, Professor? Some beach. A beach in the tropics, it would appear. Yes, it looks pretty nice. When did you leave England? Oh, I don't know, probably hmm, a week ago. I took a bit of a swim. I went down to Bristol, jumped in, and I was carried away in the tide. Professor, I know a lot of us want to know how you got to be a professor. How does, how does an otter do that? Yes, well, it is a peculiar situation, I should say. I went about it quite naturally and logically, as an otter would do so. Professor, you have an electrical engineering degree, is that true? Yes, it is. How does a sea otter exactly acquire an electrical engineering degree? Well, you see, I put on a suit, then a bow tie, and I went to school every day. No one seemed to look twice at me. This was at Oxford, where pretty much everyone dresses just like me. Brown suit, bow tie, glasses. It's quite easy. What I did was I audited every class I could for four years and obtained my Bachelor's of Science in Engineering. But of course you don't obtain a degree by simply auditing a course. It's like reverse hooky in this case. You're sneaking into school. But I was having fun. So I kept at it. It was about this time that someone in the aquatics and marine biology department discovered that there was a sea otter in their midst. And this kind person took me under their wing, shall we say. And I told that person my story. And they said, well, why don't you keep going? Perhaps get your master's and then a PhD. Well, in short order, these things happened. I stayed in school, and I obtained these degrees. And this kind person, I can't mention their name because, you know, it's, I don't want that person to get into trouble. You know, it's, it's problematic having animals at school, as we all know. But, you know, this person knew another person in the degree printing department. And so what they did was printed up a degree for me. The kindly old man who ran the printer, printed out the diplomas. He would feed me his bits of sandwiches every day. 
I'm coming to his office and he'd save me, you know. I was almost like his pet, but you see, all those can be pets. We're we're a proud species. And we shan't be caged. We shan't be domesticated. It's not in the otter way. If you ever see an a pet otter, he's an imposter. He's not a real otter. Professor, I think a lot of people want to know where you live in the world. In the world? Where do I live? It could be any of a number of places, you know. I'm very mobile. But lately I've been working from home. You know what I mean? So, you know, I would get up in the morning and then stroll off to work and maybe give the sea lions a visit. Hi! Paddle by a few dolphins, perhaps a porpoise. But me being an otter, you know, I, there's certain things I do every morning just to keep up appearances. Yes, Professor, what would that be? Well, you know, I enjoy laying on my back and swimming around. Professor, who are some of your favorite scientists or people in history? Who do you really admire? Descartes, of course. Boscovich. Nikola Tesla. Thomas Edison. Steinmetz. Oh, the list goes on. There's so many great natural philosophers and experimenters, engineers, that all these fellows, you know, they were hands-on types. With the exception of Steinmetz, of course, he was a mathematical genius and came up with everything that we use today, to the point that even he is forgotten by today's engineers. But for me, it's important to be hands-on, so to speak. Of course, I don't have hands, but these flippers. So, make of it what you will. Flippers on, as we say, in the deep. But don't get the wrong idea. Just because I'm learned, scholar, that doesn't mean I believe everything I read. The formulas that are used, they work heuristically, but there's much to be sorted out. The universe remains mysterious. We still can't explain exactly what electricity is, and there are some rather foolish notions afoot for the past century or so, claiming that, you know, the theory that light is a dimensionless point is absurd. However, the formulas that we use seem to point that way. But that's only because we've made light a dimensionless point. It wouldn't work that way if we assumed that light had dimension, a spherical, a radius. It might explain many things. But we've swept all that under the rug and are off to greener pastures. How green? I didn't come here to lecture you, my boy. I just popped in to say hello. Well, it's always good to see you. Good. Are you going to head back to England anytime soon? England? Look at this place I'm in. I haven't a reason to return to England, at least not for a while. It's too nice here. I can work remotely. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you dial into your classes or work remotely. How's the whole distance learning, distance teaching thing working right now? It's got to be pretty hard. Hard, yes. I'll say. It's even harder for us authors. You're hard. I was told I told too many altar jokes, so I'm doing my best to refrain. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a bit hungry. We otters, we need to eat quite frequently, much more than you. Of course, we sleep a lot more than you, and I think we just, our day to day is much more exciting. I'm sure it is. 
Now you tell me. What are you working on over there? I can barely see it. Just a pile of electrical garbage, it looks from here. Yes, it's predominantly a garbage pile, but we're experimenting with a lot of different circuits and playing around and having some fun. That's the most important. Have fun. Well, I know the people watching your channel are all very, very intelligent. And I wish them all the best, and I hope to see them again soon. Thanks, Professor. Feel free to hail me anytime. If I see the signature sine wave appear in the oscilloscope, then I know it's you. <laughs> yes, yes. That triple wave. My little trick. I bounce it off the ionosphere. Yeah, I'd love to learn how you are communicating with us from wherever you are right now. But you, you still don't know exactly where you are? Nope. I'm not exactly sure. It could be West Palm Beach. There doesn't seem to be anybody on the beach. Everyone's inside hiding. Now, Professor, would you consider yourself more of a, an electrical engineer or a, a theorist or a philosopher or... No, no, no. Let me stop you right there. First and foremost, I am an author. Secondly, I am an experimenter. And when I say experiment, I mean with anything. See here, uh, if I'm on the beach and I see a stick bobbing up and down in the water, well, that's a convenient toy, right? For an author, or maybe a child. You can do things with that stick. If you watch that stick rise and fall, you can determine things like frequency, amplitude, things of that nature. Little games you can play to pass the time. Well, of course, a philosopher. Any animal that gets up on its hind legs and walks with humans must be a philosopher. Do you know what Perseus said? He said, do not consult anyone's opinions but your own. Now, do you know what he meant by that? Well, of course it means come to your own conclusion. Now, how do you do that? In today's world, we're constantly fed what to think, what to read, what to listen to, what's good, what's bad. And it's a huge, wide spectrum now, but largely, it's propaganda. You have to make up your own mind about everything, in my opinion. What are, you, what are you doing there, Professor? Oh, just licking my flipper clean. There's some sand on it. I should be going now. There's a there's a man coming down this way in a white truck. I want to get off the beach before he asks me any peculiar questions. Such as, why are you wearing a bow tie? Most people seem scared to confront me, except for children, of course. Children are fearless. Often, though, they think I'm a dog. Some strange, small dog. So that's a bit demeaning, I should say. But I'm okay with that. I can be cool. Well, Professor, it's great to have you on our channel from time to time. Feel free to... Uh visit anytime hail me on the secret frequency the triple sine wave i'll look for it thank you yes it's great to be there it's great to be here of course <laughs> i'll let you uh get back to it plus the uh, the guy in the van the guy in the white truck's probably getting pretty close now isn't he no he seems to have gone i'm alone again Nice chatting with you. Cheers. Good to see you, Professor. Good to see you, too. Mongoose hunter.